Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. It's Mitchell Renz here, a.k.a. Roxy, here to deliver the latest around the silver and black, but I would not be able to do today's show if it wasn't for our awesome sponsor, Hexclad. And huge shout-out to them because they're not only hooking up the nation, they're also really trying to elevate the cooking game around here for the Raiders Report watchers. So go to hexclad.com slash chat. Make sure that you use promo code chat for 10% off your entire order. So now that the Raiders took care of business up against the San Francisco 49ers yesterday, winning 34-7, my mindset now is we're looking forward to preseason week two up against the Los Angeles Rams. So coming up here on today's show is we're going to get into the latest news around the Raiders and the Rams. Not too, too much to talk about, but... We do at least have something to bring up. I also want to discuss Dylan Parham, the injury news around him. Josh McDaniel spoke about the Raiders starting left guard. I'll give you the latest on that situation. And then at the very end, Dave Ziegler had some interesting things to say about Josh Jacobs. So I'll give you the update on the Raiders star running back. Now, in terms of the update here for Las Vegas and the Rams, they're going to hold a joint practice on August 16th and 17th, which not too surprising. These two teams are going to be battling it out on Saturday the 19th. So basically the Raiders, they flew to Los Angeles late last night. They're going to rest up today and then they're going to get into joint practices Wednesday, Thursday against the Rams. Probably rest up a little bit Friday and then get ready to go to, I don't know, maybe win another game during this preseason. A fight. I know the last time the Raiders and Rams had joint practice, there, there was a fight. So we'll have to see what ends up going down. Coming up next here on the show, Dylan Parham got some injury news around him because I was a little bit scared to see what happened with Parham. If you don't know, he did leave the game early up against the Niners. But hey, if you didn't know, it's probably because you missed our watch party. So I want to just say thank you from the bottom of my heart from Chugs and I both here. To every single crazy mother effort that tuned into the show, man, we had over 100,000 people watching. Yeah, Raider Ron did his thing, but a bunch of people helped us take down the 49ers report. And I don't want you to miss all of our watch parties. We will be live for every single Raiders preseason, regular season, maybe playoff games this year. Seriously, we have a hell of a time. Subscribe and turn on those notifications. So let's talk about Parham real quick because he left the first quarter against the 49ers on Sunday. And according to a report, it is believed that he suffered a concussion. Josh, today when he spoke to the media, didn't really provide much of an update on Parham, which I don't really blame him because with concussions, you want to make sure that you hit it right on the head and no pun intended there. Like, you legit want to make sure that that's the injury that was sustained. And for him, I don't have the update on him necessarily quite yet. But the NFL, I do know, is strict with concussion protocols. They have to be. When you're dealing with your head, believe it or not, it's very important to make sure that you're okay. The Raiders are going to be cautious with injuries. We've seen it this offseason with Garoppolo. We've seen it this offseason with Tyree Wilson. So I do not anticipate that you're going to see Parham out there week two against the Rams because there's no reason to put him out there. He's one of your best offensive linemen. He's honestly the main guy that this organization looks for for running their offense through right now. And if you're going to rest other offensive linemen like Colt Miller didn't play against the Niners, I know what I have in Parham. He's a great left guard. I want him to rest up, and I want him to be healthy for the regular season. So if he is dealing with those concussions, McDaniel, Ziegler, as far as I'm concerned, there is no reason, and I mean no reason whatsoever to put him out there on the field. So what do you think here? With me saying that I don't want Parham out there playing, who should start at left guard against the Los Angeles Rams? Should it be Natane Moody type NM? Do you think it should be Greg Van Roten type GVR? Maybe McClendon Curtis, the UDFA type MC, or if you believe that it should be another player, I want you to type O. My answer on this is I would put Nutane Moody at left guard. I would also like to see what Greg Van Roten and Moody kind of look like side by side. I would incorporate all three of those players working in at the left guard position. And the reason why I say that is because 
I do think that right guard, they kind of know what they want to do, and it's either going to be a Greg Van Roten. It's either going to be an Alex Bars. Maybe they kick Jermaine Illuminor inside and throw Theron Munford at right tackle. All I know is the preseason is about seeing what the offensive line can do, and the offensive line minus Justin Huron had one hell of a game up against the 49ers. Now, coming up next here on the show, we got the latest on Josh Jacobs, because anytime the general manager talks about your star running back who is Yet to sign the franchise tag, yet to show up the training camp. You don't even know if he's going to play. I do think it's worth noting. Also, here's worth noting. If you want to elevate your kitchen game, Hexclad is here to really help you go from here to, I'm talking, out of bounds right here. So huge shout out to them for sponsoring the Raiders Report because Hexclad has revolutionized the cookware industry with a hybrid pan that gives you all the convenience and cleanup of non-stick the versatility of your grandma's cast iron, and a lifetime warranty just in case you find a way to destroy them. Use promo code CHAT at hexclad.com slash chat for 10% off. Hexclad truly checks every single box when it comes to picking your cookware. Their metal utensils safe, dishwasher safe, and oven safe up to 500 degrees. But you know what, man? Don't just take my word for it. Gordon Ramsay, he's pretty famous. He knows a thing or two about cooking right and this is what he had to say the sear i can get with these pans is incredible with absolutely no stick the temperature control is utter perfection and the cleanup is effortless i love using hexclad at home they're also the sexiest pans on the market score points at home it's time to stop ordering delivery food and start cooking like a big boy with hexclad real cuisine isn't made in the microwave it's cooked in hexclad for a limited time get 10 percent with our special link Hexclad.com slash chat. That's 10% off at H-E-X-C-L-A-D dot com slash chat with code chat. Now, again, anytime I'm going to talk about a pan being sexy, I do want to show you guys how sexy these pans actually are. On top of that, though, they are dishwasher safe, which I love because if there's one thing I hate doing now that I actually have a dishwasher... It's cleaning a pan, so you throw it in. I don't got to hear it from Alex, and I don't got to hear it from Chuck either, so that's what we're all about. Shout out to Hexclad again at hexclad.com slash chat, promo code chat. So let's talk about Josh Jacobs because Jacobs has always been the, the talk of the town, right? And uh, nothing really changed on Sunday's preseason game. He obviously was not at the game, but I laugh because I love Raider fans so much they see Dave Ziegler walking by him, and a few of the fans are kind of heckling Ziegler a little bit. And, you know, they're saying, hey, man, are you going to get a deal done with Josh Jacobs or not? And Ziegler, you can hear in the video, and I can put it on Twitter if you need me to, at MitchellRens365, you can hear Ziegler say, we'll make it happen. So then obviously Raider fans are like, oh, shit, wait a minute. Ziegler just said, we'll make it happen. Fans told Ziegler to put some incentives in there. So... Obviously, Raider fans want to have their star running back back. Obviously, Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels want Josh Jacobs there, or else they would have never put the franchise tag on him. It's a balancing act right now between the two sides, and I do really, really hope that this deal does end up getting done sooner rather than later. If you want a quick recap on some of the latest around Jacobs, I have it right here because if you have lived underneath the rock for the past few months, you've probably missed quite a bit. There was a report that came out about a week, week and a half ago from Josina Anderson that said that the Raiders are open to restarting talks. So you hear the story about Raiders open to restarting talks, and then you hear Dave Ziegler saying, hey, we're going to get a deal done. Jacobs has said that he won't sign the franchise tag, which is guaranteed $10.1 million. And then the day before training camp, he said that he wasn't planning on returning anytime soon, took a flight on July 24th out of Las Vegas. So it's definitely been a little bit of a high school drama and a bit of a headache for this organization. Jacobs, as it stands right now, him and his team have turned down at least three offers from the Raiders this offseason. The first offer they got was July 8th, and since then, he's gotten a few more. The latest offer, which has been confirmed by multiple NFL insiders, was around $12 million per year. And according to Jacobs and people close to him, Jacobs isn't necessarily looking for the, the big-time payday this season. He wants security in his deal. What does that mean? He's essentially looking for a deal that's got multiple years or some extra guarantees. The problem with that scenario is that Jacobs, he can only sign a one-year deal with Las Vegas. Right, like I saw a tweet from MLF Football 
trying to make a spin that Ziegler said that the Raiders are going to sign into a long-term deal. That can't happen. Like, it, it literally can't. That's why that July 17th deadline was as important as what it is. And if Jacobs would sign the tag at $10.1 million, he would be the fourth highest paid running back this year in terms of salary cap, which is what the Raiders care about. So do I believe that Jacobs wants to be a member of this team? Yes, I know people that are close to Jacobs. I know people that are close to Jacobs' family, and it, I'm telling you, he wants to be a part of this team. But I will also say this. I only want Jacobs if he is motivated because in some other years, you know, maybe he was not willing to play a certain game because he's battling an injury. This past year, he played through him because he was trying to get that contract here. I want a motivated Jacobs. That's the only way that I'm willing to make the deal that I'm about to make to you and to Jacobs right now. So what I want you guys to do, though, is share your thoughts on this entire Jacobs situation. Like, are you on Team Jacobs? Are you on the side of the Raiders? You're like, hey, man, you should just play it $10.1 million. Or are you, hey, this guy deserves all the money in the world. I want to know your thoughts around Jacobs down in the comments. My thoughts are... I want Jacobs to get a deal very similar to what the New York Giants did with Saquon Barkley, which, again, Barkley, Jacobs, very similar road that they had the entire offseason because both got the franchise tag, both, both did not get an extension by July 17th. But what did the Giants and Barkley do? They actually talked. And guess what? I like to believe when you get two adults or adult-thinking people in the same room, you can come together and you can get something solved. So the new deal that they gave for Barkley was one year, $10.1 million, and then they gave him $2 million in signing bonus. So essentially, Barkley's going to make $12.1 million guaranteed for 2023. What I love, though, and shout out to the fan that was screaming, give him some incentives, talking to Jacobs and yelling at Dave Ziegler over the weekend. This is what all NFL teams should do. You should do more incentive-based deals. So for Barkley, he can make essentially up to 909 k if he hits these numbers. I'm on board for that because in today's NFL, the only way I'm paying a running back is if you honestly think that you can make the playoffs. That's the only way that you're going to make it happen. So what's my deal for Jacobs? I'm giving you the exact same damn thing that the Giants gave Saquon Barkley. I'll give you $12.1 million guaranteed. So what are you doing? You're taking the 10.1 franchise tag. I'll give you the $2 million of the guaranteed money and incentives, 12.1. But you know what? I want to show you that we value you. And you honestly, not even on, you said on an Instagram post that you are always willing to bet on yourself. Well, here's your opportunity to bet on yourself. I'm going to offer you double. Double everything that Barkley was going to get for his incentives. I'll offer you the same thing. However, you got to make the playoffs because that's why this deals end up getting done. Franchise tag. Not guaranteed to make the playoffs. But hey, if I'm going to give you that extra money, here's your playoff numbers. And then the numbers you see here for the rushing yards, the catches, total touchdowns, that is the average that Jacobs has had his entire first four years in the NFL. So he has averaged that many rushing yards. He has averaged that many catches per season. He has averaged that many total touchdowns. You put all that together, and Jacobs going to make an extra $1.8 million. Because in today's running back market, you only pay a running back when you believe you can make the playoffs. And after a 6-11 and season, I get it. They might be a little bit low. But that game that I saw, I know, Mitch, it's the preseason. The Raiders look really damn good. Offensive line, they were clicking. It looked like McDaniels even matured a little bit from last season. So my offer is this with Jacobs. If you're not going to be able to tag him, which is based off my contract, is $14.5 million at minimum in 2024. So if Jacobs wants to talk about, all right, I want security, that tells me that he doesn't want to be put on the franchise tag anymore. That's fine. So if I put a clause in Jacobs' contract that says, hey, you can't franchise tag him in 2024, very similar to what NFL teams with a no trade clause, the reason why it's 14.5 is because if you were to put him at $12.1 million, 20% more than 12.1, the following season is $14.5 million. Jacobs has to be understanding enough to say, okay, Turning down 14.5 is a lot, but that's okay because you want the longevity in the years and you would rather test the free agent market. So if Jacobs wants that no franchise tag option, I am confidently saying that this will be the final year with the Las Vegas Raiders. Like when you look at a lot of these other deals, like as I'm re recording this video right now, you know, Ziga Elliott just signed a deal with the New England Patriots, a one-year deal worth up 
worth up. It's not $6 million guaranteed, worth up to $6 million in incentives. If I'm Jacobs, I'm like, oh, shit, Zeke, who's had a lot of really solid years in the NFL, worth up to $6 mil. I have the opportunity to make double the amount of money that Ezekiel Elliott's making. I'm just saying the running back market's a little bit different. So as it stands right now, I'd say that there is a 95% chance that Josh Jacobs isn't on the Raiders in 2024. I know that he feels some type of way against this Raiders organization because of everything that has happened over this offseason, including some of the moves that they've made recently in terms of bringing in extra running back help. He wants to get paid. He wants to be that main top guy, which I do not blame him whatsoever. Let me make this clear, though. The objective of today's show is to make the Raiders happy and to make Josh Jacobs happy because I know that'll make you and me probably very, very happy. Now, I also see some other updates here around the Raiders that I just want to be able to hit here real quick. Uh, first off, the Raiders, they did submit a claim for former Falcons linebacker Michael Walker, but the Bears claimed him first overall, so that was something to note. And then also my guy Raiders Scout, his Instagram account recently just got deleted. If you don't already know, go give him a follow on IG. It really sucks that that happened. I don't know who did it to him, but it is what it is. And he's also providing an update here that former Raiders safety Deron Harmon is working out with the Baltimore Ravens today. So, Shout out to my guy, Scout. Terrible that that happened to you. Go support him. He's one of my brothers here. And that's all the Raiders news, rumors we got today. Hopefully we get a deal done soon with Josh Jacobs.